Today I want to discuss the topic of support vector machines. The first thing that we need to know about SVMs is that it's a classification machine learning algorithm. In the essence that when it receives a new instance, it will say whether this instance is classified to belong to class A or class B, or if there are any possible further classes. So that makes it lie under the classification category. The second thing that we need to know about SVMs is that it's supervised. It's a supervised machine learning algorithm because it needs its training data set to have labels or output for each and every single instance to be able to learn and train on it. So when it receives a new instance, it can say uh, how this classification is going to be made based on what it had learned before. So these are the very two things that I wanted to, to get started by. So let's get into topic further. The challenge here that SVM tries to, um, to solve is that when we here have two classes, and for simplicity's sake, this is a graph of a two-dimensional space, and we only have two classes, the red class and the blue class. The challenge here is, as we've stated, how can I separate between these two classes? And because here this is a very visual intuitive representation of our challenge, one can say that, well, you can separate them like that. But then, what makes that line so special? Why can't I separate it in that way? Or this way? So this is our question here. Which is the optimal line that can allow us to distinguish between two classes from each other? So here we're going to start the concept of maximizing our margin. When we draw, as an example, that line, the algorithm starts to deduce which two points from both classes are nearest to that line. So as we can see here, the blue point, this blue point is nearest to that line, and that red point is nearest to that line. Okay, so now we've chosen our support vectors. And why are they called support vectors? They're called support vectors because they help in building the decision boundary. They help in choosing whether this line indeed is going to be our margin, another terminology, or our, sorry, our hyperplane. So we have our support vectors and we have our hyperplane. How does support vectors help in saying whether this is our optimal hyperplane to distinguish between these two classes from each other? It does so based on a concept, which is maximizing the margin. So the distance between the red point and the hyperplane and the blue point and the hyperplane, they have to be equal to each other. So they have to be equidistant to each other from that hyperplane. So that's the first rule. The second rule is that the summation of that distance and that distance provides the margin. And whenever we maximize the margin, it's going to help us in, it, it's going to provide to us a better chance of choosing that hyperplane or that line to be our hyperplane. So these are our support vectors. So, so let's recap again. The distance between the red point to the hyperplane and the distance between the blue point to the hyperplane, they have to be equidistant, so they have to be equal to each other. The second thing is that the sum between that distance and that distance have to be as, has to be as maximum as possible. So whenever the distance between the support vectors are maximized as much as possible, then as we said, this gives us a better chance of choosing this line to be our hyperplane. Okay. Now, imagine if we have points like that. 
The difference is that these points, they are linearly separable, meaning that I can separate between them by using a linear line. However, this is not linearly uh, separable. So this challenge of separating or drawing a hyperplane between these two classes will be solved by another algorithm, which is called kernel SVM. And I'll explain it also in the next video. Now, um, let's go into the C parameter concept. When we draw up our model or try to fit the model into our training data set, the algorithm requires uh, two inputs. Alongside with the kernel, we have the C parameter. The C parameter concept is very simple. And now we know three more, three important concepts in our algorithm. We now know what support vectors are, what the hyperplane is, and what the margin is. And the maximum, the margin, the better. But in order to understand now what the C parameter is, we have to understand that we have two types of errors. We have a classification error and we have a margin error. A classification error occurs when one of the blue points, for example, is classified as the red. So one of the blue points lies on the other side of the hyperplane. So that leads us to a classification error. However, a margin error occurs when one of the points gets inside the margin, which means that if we have one of the points in here, okay, inside, this is our margin, this, this distance between the support vectors is called our margin, and between the support vectors and the hyperplane, the summation or that whole distance is called our margin, and whenever one of the points gets inside this margin, then this is one form of a margin error. So the total error of this algorithm is the summation between the classification error and the margin error. So this is where the C parameter kicks in. As we can see here on the left side, we chose a very, um, a very large C parameter. So what a very large C parameter does is that it restricts the model. It tries to penalize and not allow any errors to be, to be, um, to occur on the model itself. Okay. And this is very bad because it's, it's not preferred when our data set has many outliers. Because if we have outliers in our data set, then it will try to fit this model to our data set so overfitting can occur. And it does not disregard outliers because outliers are nothing but um, uh, patterns or behaviors of instances in our data set that do not explain the whole behavior of our or trends in our data set. So this is what makes it an outlier. So when you tend to fit the model or provide a very large C parameter on our model and or on our data set and has, it has outliers, then that's not very much preferable because it may lead to overfitting of the model. However, when we provide a small and optimal value for the C, it disregards outliers in the essence that they really do not, um, they really do not influence my classification okay so this is more preferred than providing a very large value for the c okay because it makes us reach a more respectful hyperplane that separates or distinguishes between the red class and the green class as we can see here one last and final thing that i need to uh, say here is that um you know as we said here our model, it takes as input uh, two, uh, uh, two parameters. We have the kernel, and we have agreed that this, that this will be of type linear, and we have the C. And the C, you can play around with different C values. It can be as big as a thousand, and it can be as small as 0 0.1. So you can play around with different C parameters, and then see whether, uh, which, which, um, which model with the following parameters is going to give me 
a highest accuracy. And this is the value of the C that you can use in your model. And at the end, what, the, what it does is that it will predict the testing instances on, um, based on the model that you have chosen with its respectful um, uh, parameters. So this is basically what support vector machines are from a non-mathematics uh, perspective. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to receive more videos um, about these topics.